Hey everyone, um, thanks for checking out this video. Uh, just a, a quick background. I um, had the opportunity to go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and visit the awesome uh, the Beatles Get Back to Let It Be um, exhibit that they just launched, which was great, which I heard from my uh, heard about from my friend Gary Astridge, who is joining us today. So Gary, welcome on to the, uh, this cool little video we got here today. Thank you, Bart. Nice to see you again. Why don't you explain to folks who, your involvement with the Beatles and uh, with Ringo, I should say, and then we'll talk a little bit about getting these iconic drums to the Rock Hall. All right. I guess in short, it's always hard for me to describe <laughs> what I yeah. do. It's always a, a, a different projects and things, but uh, I would say I'm curator for his Beatles era drum kits and yeah. uh, historian. Uh, uh, there's been times where Ringo would ask me to uh, dig up a little history and things for you know for him. Yeah, and um, and I work on just a number of uh, projects, both confidential and public. And your website is ringosbeetlekits.com. Right. And um, it's just, I mean, if you're ever curious about anything, uh, it is it is on there. And it's very, very detailed. Uh, there's another video. There's, there's, there's another video interview and there's another episode. So there's two episodes with Gary on the podcast, which um, I'll put in the description of this, this video. But all right, for starters, Gary, let's, um, let's maybe talk about what the process was like from kind of point A to point B, point B being the rock hall, uh, of getting this drum set there. Okay. Um, once once uh, the deal was was made and, and approval, uh, you know, so many little details that come into place. You know, one mainly is insurance. You know, who's going to cover it from the time it leaves the vault uh, in L.A. till the time it comes back. You know, a, a year later, right? So, so that had to be set up, and then um, uh, it's it's very very detailed. Where we set up a program that's almost uh, like you'd see in the military. You know, where even though the drums in there, the, the drum kits are all in, in 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 a vault. You know, highly secured. Uh, they'll still go through everything, and then mm. just make sure that everything is there. You know, we retake photos of, of, the, of the kit wow. and then, um, uh, close the road cases up. Um, they get they get locked and uh, I get the key. So then with the, then they get shipped overnighted um, to the Rock Hall. The people there are absolutely great. I'm going to say this time and time again. Yeah. But um, uh, so so when the drum kits arrived, they, they were crated and uh, um so, so we had to uncrate them, uh, roll the uh, road cases into this room where they uh, log everything in, and then they do a condition report of every single item. And you know, so it's just it's just a repetition of uh, you know of, of things. And it's funny because you know, I guess there was this magical moment in time where all of Ringo's uh, Beetle kits um, are now historic artifacts. Yeah. You know, so uh, um, there's a lot of reverence there, you know, and you can see that, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of used to it. But but, but when you see the people at the, the Rock Hall, you know, it's like, you know, you're, you're expecting them just to drop to their knees and start bowing, you know. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, when we went into this, when I first got there, they gave me gloves and uh, walk into this room. I had no idea what it was. It was just a large room with a table. And there's laid out all of the clothing that you see on display and uh, George's, you know, uh, uh, Rocky guitar, Lennon's Epiphone Casino. <laughs> and I, I turned into a little kid, you know, just because it's like right there, you know? Yeah. And um, I mean, you are a Beatles, like, fanatic, like all of us. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, you, I mean, you're a king of it. Like, it's like, you're not... Uh, impervious to the like excitement of that well, I mean, no, you, yeah it still makes your heart beat you know and, and, it, and it's interesting because the other thing that i i noticed this a, a long time ago i mean i i've seen people at the rock and roll hall of fame in the past um when i set up uh ringo's oyster black pearl uh, super classic kit you know i i did that uh, after hours on one specific evening the following day the the exhibit opened so i, I went back I just wanted to see people's response. 
And it was interesting because <laughs> here comes a group of young guys, like four guys, and they were in a band. And the drummer does uh, bow down and whatever. But <laughs> you know, but then you saw people coming over and they're just like touching the plexiglass, standing there, looking at yeah. the kit. You know, some just staring at it in amazement, some crying. And, oh, and, wow. and and I'm off in the corner. Nobody knows me. And I'm watching this and I start crying thinking, oh, wow. I cannot believe the, the effect that this has on, on, on people. You know, when, 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 when people see these, uh, and, and I'll call them artifacts, right? Um, you see the emotion and, and it's like, oh my God, I have a chance to actually see this stuff. And that, that is like one level, but it's a whole other level when you don't have the plexiglass and they're right there and, and yeah. you're the guy handling them. You know, that, that is, um, th- that's where the reverence comes in. That's where the, the soberness comes in of, of, uh, um, yeah. Being responsible, you know, or, or having Ringo um, allow you to be responsible. It makes me think of that, that, you know, everyone's done that where you're turned around and you turn your back and you bump into the ride stand and it falls into the, the bass drum or something. But that, like you, you're obviously not doing that. You're very careful. But, oh, you could see a nightmare situation where something like that happens with uh, one of these unbelievable artifacts, which um, thankfully you're in charge and that will never happen. Yeah, but you know, what's interesting is, is uh, even when I set the kit up this time, you're, you're, you're so focused on, on trying to set it up exact to the way Ringo had it, you know, and um, uh, yet uh, you don't realize uh, because you're so focused, there's an audience there. You know, there, there, there had because there was um, uh, contractors there building the uh, yep. exhibit. Uh, there was the, the, the you know, the, the variety of uh, employees and workers that were there. You know, so um, you know, maybe eight, eight to ten people, and and they're watching every move. You know, so <laughs> yeah. um, and it was funny Not because you know, but as you're adjusting the symbols and stuff, it's almost like an artist. You know, with, with having the paintbrush, putting the final touches on. You know, so <laughs> yeah, the little wing nut, like one more tight. <laughs> yeah. I, I did hear from the press uh, a couple press people, which again, I had a press pass, which always feels weird to me because I'm just a guy. You know, and uh, but the podcast people like it. But fortunately, I could I could get a press pass. But these were like news people from like Cleveland dot com and stuff. And, you know, I talked to them and they and they said they said, oh, man, Gary was awesome at the like of I guess you t- they saw you or you met some of them or you talked to some people. One guy in particular was like, oh, he was so cool. He was so nice to everyone. So you you've got a good reputation in uh, in Cleveland. Yeah, that's that that, that's nice to know. And in fact, one of the one of the guys, and, and I'm sorry that I can't remember his name. He had said that he goes, you know, when you were here some years back, and you you you, uh, um, you set up the uh, um, the super classic kit of Ringo's. You know, he said that uh, there, there was there was two guys that helped me. You know, that that once I had it on, they 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 built the plexiglass security around it, and uh, one of the guys' name was uh, Frank, and he said. You don't know what that meant to him. And he goes for for him to be with you doing that, you know. And 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 it's funny because you know, I, like you, I just feel hey, I'm just a guy. I just lucked out yeah. to have a really cool job. But yeah, um, well, yeah, he'll remember that the rest of his life. I mean, absolutely. I mean, these experiences of I remember touching Gene Krupa's bass drum that Don McCauley had at the Chicago show in 2019 that Charlie Watts had purchased and just. I'll never forget that, that experience of just being close to that, that drum, but, um, mm-hmm. you've got it set up then. And then, I mean, did, did it was, when they encased it in, I'm sure it's like, all right, everything better be right here because we're putting the, the glass up and you're not really tweaking anymore. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it was interesting when I got there, they, they had the, uh, uh, the platform and then they had plexiglass on, uh, um, the front already uh, uh-huh. on, on one of the sides and on the top. So, so there was just the one fiberglass panel on the, um, uh, on the right. If you're inside, if you're on sure. the drum, looking out at the uh, area, but yeah, when, when I set the kit up, <laughs> I'm, I'm going like, Hey guys, um, there's no room for the drum stool. It's it's, it was, it was, wasn't built deep enough. So it's like, you know, and, and, and thank God there was enough space to, um, uh, you know, put on the bass pedal, you know, so, oh, wow. but, but, but yeah, but it was tight. So anyone will notice that. Yeah. Um, Which 
age old drummer problem, not having room to fit into your, <laughs> yeah. your area. But as, a stage. As, <laughs> yeah, as people uh, will hopefully go back and check out your episode uh, about Get Back in particular, the throne and all that stuff is very um, detailed. I mean, there's a lot of information and detail that you can go into about that. But I, I think maybe now, can you give a kind of a brief rundown um, of the drum set? And again, for people listening, there is a lot more information in in the two previous episodes where Gary goes full uh, Beatles, you know, um, for the Beatles nuts out there who will, who will like that. But maybe describe the drum set okay. um, that we're talking about. Yeah, so, so it's a, a 1967 uh, Ludwig uh, Hollywood model um, thermoglass kit, you know, but, you know, some people call it maple. You know. um, so you have... Uh, Ringo's snare, right? The the jazz festival, and um, as far as the kit, you know, you have a uh, um, eight by twelve tom, thirteen by nine, um, sixteen by sixteen, and a twenty two by fourteen bass drum. Hmm. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, talking about the bass drum uh, or the kit, actually, you know, Ringo at one point had all of the uh, um, drum city logo stickers yeah. that, that you see yeah. and a lot of people keep questioning you know what is that what's on it yeah and for people watching this here, here's here's something for you um if you're looking at the the bass drum mm -hmm. squat down look up and you'll see one of the stickers is in the bass drum you know <laughs> that, that was that was put there on the inside so wow. you, know, you, know, you get a good idea to um uh see what the the, the original looks like yeah, because they're not, and I'm looking at a picture over here, they're not on the drum set anymore, but you can very clearly tell yeah. where they were yeah. just by the nature of a sticker. What's the little blue, um, I believe it was a number, like a like a printable, like a label. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. is that? Uh, tw twice, um, th there was blue labels, and then there was uh, um, black as well. They might be removed, but um, at some point, somebody was cataloging all of the... Uh, uh, drum pieces, but mm. we couldn't find any book, any record. Wow. Nothing. So, uh, seems bold to print a label and stick it onto the artifact itself. Yeah, no, but this is, I think this was done way, you know, like, um, way back. yeah, yes. Yeah, so, so, so the point is who knew then, right? I mean, how yeah. like, all of this was going to get, geez. Um, but, um, but, but to go on with, with the kit, um, so, yeah. so we have the symbols, you know, there's, uh, uh, a 20 inch sizzle an 18 inch a, a 20 inch and then 14 inch hi hats hmm. so um uh that about covers it and there, there's calfskin heads on the kit um we actually have the original from the bass drum it's not on it um and uh um, but but we, we we thought we'd put those on because that's how the kit came you know, with, with caps. Yeah. But they're new. They're newer. They're, they're not new. the original. They're newer. Yeah. Do yeah. you know who, w what make, or, you know, who made the calf skin heads just out of um, curiosity? Well, they would have been Ludwig. You know? I mean, on the newer ones that you oh, guys the new got. ones. Um, I think it was Sterling. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the company that, that, that we, we obtained those from. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Give yeah. A little plug. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And those will last forever. That's what you always hear is those things will, but I'm sure they're, they're, uh, is, is that, little case that the um you know the two guitars and the drum set is in i'm sure that's like humidity controlled and everything in there is very i, I, I know that the plexiglass is like uv protected yeah you know and, and i think that the muse uh, the museum uh is set at a temperature and humidity throughout the uh, uh, facility yeah yeah, oh, yeah. Well, and the other thing i wanted to mention that people might not know this is going back to their clothing uh a ringo's red raincoat uh the one that he was wearing and, that, and that's on display. That was actually uh, Ringo's wife, uh, uh, Maureen. That was that was <laughs> that was her coat so, that he was wearing. Wow! And um, there's also a uh, uh, like a black and gray uh, shirt of Paul McCartney's that's on display. And what's interesting about that one is uh, if you go back in history and start going through photos. Paul was wearing that way back, like, you know, at the beginning of the Beatles and it keeps showing up, you know? So, yeah. um, 
I, yeah, I just thought that was kind of amazing. Yeah, I mean, so we're not alone though. We're like, I put on a shirt that I have had since high school, and my wife is like, "Get rid of the shirt." <laughs> Paul's doing it, you know. He's got okay. his shirt. It's a little different though. And then we also have John Lennon's uh, jean jacket there, and then um, George Harrison's iconic uh, pink pinstripe suit, which. Boy, I mean, out of this, these four items, George and Ringo, that coat are very, um, those are very iconic. And it looks like we have Ringo's pants as well. Yeah, there's a pair of pants there too. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't know if he wore that on the roof. I, I'm, I'm assuming he did. I, I didn't get involved in that other than, yeah. you know, being told that that was, that that was coming and it would be in the road case. Yeah. Super cool. And um, I was mentioning to Gary before we started that um, it's uh, when you go in these things and you're filming and you have a press pass, you kind of, you're in a different mindset. It's like if you work an event, it's not as fun as just attending the event. Not to say this wasn't extremely fun to do, but I actually would love to go back at some point because it's here for a year, uh, I believe, yep. mm -hmm. um, and just really soak it in or even look at my own photos and videos a lot. Um, but I, I highly recommend that people uh, make the trek to see it. And and like I said, it's a, it's a relatively... Um, it's not going to take you all day to get through it, but there's so much other stuff at the rock hall. You could spend the entire day there. And, and cause there are outside of the exhibit, there's also um, another wall of Beatles stuff. Like with exactly. So, so, for, so for people that want to go there for the Beatles experience, um, when you add those two, there is quite a bit. You yeah. Know? yeah. Were you involved with any of that stuff? Cause I saw there was a drumstick and uh, some other uh, gear did you do anything with that that other wall over the years? Yeah, not with the wall, but at one point, uh, I, th I think it was from 2015 into 2016, um, Ringo had uh, his 1964 Oyster Black Pearl oh, cool. kit there. So I set it up and took that down. That's great. And that was, yeah, because I set it up in April, um, I, I, March or April of um, 15. And that, that was right around the time when, when they were prepping things for Ringo's induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as an individual. Sure. Oh, man. So cool. So then uh, to wrap things up here, I mean, you will then go back in a year and you will disassemble and take it all back. Yeah. Right? Yep. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And then hopefully, uh, I, I have to mention that the, the people in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame you know how you, you could have you, you have people were were, were uh, that, that work at Disney World, Disneyland, and it's like, oh my god, I love my job. I feel like a kid every day, you know. And then and, and at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, that's how every yeah. single employee is. Not, not only are they quality people, great personalities. I, I I don't know what their hiring process is, but everybody there loves what they do, and and, yeah. and there's such a deep passion. And and every time you go to I know for me, when I would go to do something, you know, um, it, it wasn't people, Hey, I, I want to help you so I can hold Ringo symbol stand. Yeah. I mean, they, they genuinely wanted to, you know, just, just make sure that they they were there to do whatever they could to help you. Yeah. I mean, they're just great people. I can't say enough. And the other thing is that, um, uh, hopefully during this year, um, I might be, I might be invited there to do a talk. So, um, oh. Yeah, because they're looking at doing a lot of beatly events uh, during the you know, course of the year while they have uh, uh, this, this exhibit. That's great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I got to go in an hour early, which was super cool. Um, but then at, at 10 a.m. when it opened, I mean, people were like, it was it was on. I mean, <laughs> there was a, a steady flow of people. Um, and actually, while, while we're talking about the staff, I want to thank uh, Shauna Wilson who helped set up the media stuff with me, um, which was just awesome. I got to park right in front on the sidewalk in front of uh, the Rock Hall, which was a weird little <laughs> perk that was kind of fun for a picture. Um, premium, yeah. yeah. And um, and Mandy Smith, who's been on the show, who does the education uh, yeah, great person. Uh, director. And so on that note, after we wrap up with Gary and this video is kind of ending, at the end of this, stick around because I'm going to put in a video of the garage, uh, which is the cool area where you can go up. Um, I forget what floor it was on, uh, but you could go up and play instruments and Mandy's really passionate awesome? about that. Did you check that out? Wasn't that yeah, cool? Yeah, it's absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. Yeah. I know she's done a ton of work, all of them, and I met the folks there and they were uh, it's very cool. It teaches you. There's a video screen and all that stuff. But anyway, anything you want to mention as we kind of wrap up here, Gary? No, we're good. Um, okay. uh, 
Yeah. All the right. thing, I'm, I mean, this is, I shouldn't even mention this, but, but I'm heading out to the, to, to Liverpool on Thursday. Yeah. And yeah. That's awesome. Some, to, yeah, to the UK but, drum show. There, yeah. 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 I'm looking forward to that. Cool. Well, hopefully this will be out in time for that. And anyone who's over there uh, and around can, uh, can check it out and mm-hmm. you'll be seeing our friend Andy Dwyer and all that good stuff. Um, Andy. Mm-hmm. Gary, thank you so much for taking the time to come thank back you. on and being such a good friend of the podcast and the show. Um, so I hope you have a great trip and thank someday you. we'll meet in person. You yeah, know? someday. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Bart. Okay. Okay.